Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this session of the Coffee Chimwag LinkedIn Live show with me, Jennifer Corcoran, your host. I usually forget to introduce myself, so I'm going to do it straight away today. So for those of you who don't already know me, I am Jennifer Corcoran. I'm the founder of My Super Connector, and I'm a multi-award winning LinkedIn trainer and strategist. I help female entrepreneurs to polish up their profiles and to connect with finesse so that they can attract their ideal clients with ease. And I'm all about organic reach on LinkedIn and the magic of DMs, not spammy, cold, horrible, awkward DMs, but genuine relationship building. So every day this week at three o'clock British time, we're still in summertime, even though it's horrible outside, we're nearly at GMT again. So every day, 3 to 3.30 p.m. I'm chatting to an amazing, inspiring woman. And today I'm going to be chatting to Wendy Kleinke. I'm just going to switch off my ticker because I know it can be a bit distracting. It's distracting me. And I just want to say, if anybody is already watching live, let me know because LinkedIn Live can take a second or two to um, get going. I think I can see one comment come true. Oh, great. Okay. Hi, Jennifer. So another lady with my name but a different spelling and i know jennifer because we both belong to the same network which is called the advance and so does wendy who i'm interviewing today and every woman in this series this week so thanks for showing up it's always good to know that i'm live and that the comments are working so i'm just going to briefly introduce wendy and then she can do a more in-depth intro when she comes up onto the screen and before i do that if you are watching live don't be shy you know, introduce yourself in the comments. Let us know where you're joining us from in the world. I'm in Devon in the UK, originally from Dublin. Wendy's over in the in the US, so don't be shy. And likewise, if you're watching on replay, just let us know. We will come back to all the comments. So brief intro to Wendy. I have got notes because I do forget and I go off on tangents. So I'm just gonna hide Jennifer's comment there. So Wendy is a client retention specialist and we're gonna be talking about retaining clients and client engagement, which is such an important topic. And I've learned the hard way, you know, that it is really important to have some kind of retainer model in your business. When I first launched my Super Connector, I, I was telling Wendy before we, we jumped on, I love quick wins and I love working with a variety of people and I just wanted to do like lots of individual LinkedIn profile critiques or LinkedIn strategy sessions kind of you know speak to me for an hour or two bye all the best but then you realize actually that kind of thing can lead to burnout because you're constantly looking for new clients the whole time and it's not really fully fulfilling your clients either because they're not probably getting as much as they could get out of you and they might need more ongoing support. So Wendy teaches client retention and engagement strategies to coaching businesses with the aim of creating a stable business and increased life, client lifespan and deeper results. So I'll let her tell you all about her experience and I'm going to actually bring you up onto the stage now and quickly click off this banner. Sorry, the joys of tech. So hi, Wendy. Thanks so hi. much for joining me today. It's great to have you. Can you yeah. tell me actually where you're from in the States, Wendy? I've yeah, got... so I live in Michigan, um, in like southern Michigan, so in the mitten part, um, surrounded by the Great Lakes, and just outside of Detroit, if you're familiar with the area or not, or, or not I don't know. But um, <laughs> kind of close to Canada, kind of, you know, kind of close. But um, yeah, so I've been um, coaching for nearly a decade, maybe over a decade now, um, in the health and wellness space is where I got my start. And that's really where I learned a lot about client retention. Um, and I actually learned a lot of like, I, it's throughout the course of my, my, my lifespan, even before I got into health and wellness, I, I knew a lot about client retention from working in restaurants. So I found that it's very important to focus on the people who are right in front of you because oftentimes if you're constantly like you were, you were talking about that burnout, if you're constantly looking for new people, you're going to get burned out. Like you're going to get tired or what's going to happen is your schedule is going to get super full and then you're going to be like, you're not going to have any, any leads. <laughs> 
So everybody, like everybody's going to fall off and you're not going to have any leads. And I've seen it happen time and time again, especially in the health and wellness space where people will focus on just getting, you know, just learning how to do the sales and then get one contract with somebody and not really know how to lay the groundwork for keeping them on why or educating them why why they might want to continue working with you or creating events that can you know bring them back in after they've gone out on their own for a while um not keeping in touch with them yeah yeah and th those those coaches those trainers that don't do that that don't work on their engagement and their follow-up and they, they don't focus on their clients and their past clients those are usually the ones that don't make it past five years yeah yeah. Well, my advice. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, it, within five years, if you've hit a point where, you know, after about two years, like you really kind of start learning how to do the sales and you're kind of getting the swing of things. Cause it's a different way of working. It's a lot of people come out of corporate into coaching and it's a totally different kind of lifestyle. So you kind of have to adapt to like how you're going to, you know, sell for your business and set up your structures and serve your clients, you kind of get in the swing of things. But by about that two year mark, like you really need to make sure that you're having a balance between your lead generation and your client retention. Otherwise, it's just like the wheels are going to fall off. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with that phrase or not, but yeah, um, definitely. it's not sustainable, is it? You know, you will burn yourself out. And I think for me, initially, it, it wasn't even a, sense, a case of I didn't know I didn't have the process for a follow up. I just didn't want the commitment. <laughs> I think it probably was because I've been so long in corporate. I just like the beauty of working with someone for an hour or two and then kind of go bye, kind of like fly little bird. You're on your way now. And mm -hmm. as nice as it is, it's not sustainable. And mm -hmm. it does lead to you just being exhausted and constantly like, marketing 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 mm -hmm. to get new people the whole time and then it, it ended up in me and anybody who is listening today who has done a strategy session with me you'll know I put a lot in because you're trying to cram in everything in this like bumper session when you could really be slip splitting it up into two or three and as great as it is to get all that information you know sometimes it can lead to overwhelm for the client as well mm -hmm. and they might want to process it at a slower pace so I've learned over time you know it, it, it doesn't mean that you're a failure if you have to kind of teach it over a few different sessions they just mm -hmm. may retain it more because you're going more at the client's pace as versus my pace <laughs> so yeah for me it was a good learning lesson and it's something I'm working on now so I love the fact that you have mentioned burnout because I definitely have had it um physically and mentally like just being on the whole time like you said booking in your calendar too tight as well all these new people and having to get to learn to know all about them whereas at least if you've got existing clients you start to become friends with them even you mm -hmm. know who they are you know the background so it's easier to jump into a session with them and it takes up less energy on my part when I already know the person yeah, exactly. You know, the love them and leave them approach, like, you know, you, you give them all the love that you've got and then you, you send them off. It not only is it going to subject you to burnout, but it's also not good for the client because like you talked about, you're very familiar with your own material. Yeah. And oftentimes the people that are coming to you, like you say one sentence and they're dissecting that one sentence because yeah. they, they just don't have those skills. So you have to kind of slow down and look at people's learning styles in the way that they communicate. And what I've noticed also um, is that if you don't address learning style, if you don't address communication type, you're going to lose people, which is going to in turn impact your reputation. Because let's be real, people love to talk and people love to talk about negative things. If they had a negative experience, they want to go warn all of their friends or anybody who will listen. Yeah. And if they are interpreting that situation as negative because they you just didn't have enough exposure to them, you just didn't have enough time to really kind of learn their language and like figure out how to talk to them in a way that they're going to understand, you're hurting yourself as well. So yeah. I think it's important to look at it from your own aspect. But then like you touched on the client, the how it's beneficial to the client and really when you're doing when you when you're when you hire a coach when you go go to a coach for whatever reason i don't care if you're going to a hair coach or a makeup coach or a health and wellness expert or 
you know, business or relationships or whatever, that person that's coming to you is coming to you with a pain. Yeah. They're coming to you with something that is hard for them and they want help. So it's very natural in human nature that you have walls up, right? Like it's just, you don't want to tell strangers all your dirty secrets, but as you get to know somebody, you, the layers will come down. Like those walls will start coming down, coming down. And if they're out the door in three months or, you know, whatever you're, you know, I go with three months because that's usually how long I make people work with me at least at, at a minimum. Um, but however long your process is, if you're not giving them enough time to really get to know you and really let their guard down, you're doing them a disservice. They're not going to get the same kind of results that they could get if they just got to open up to you a little bit more. So you have to, you have to think about it in terms of like, you're helping your client by keeping them with you long enough to actually dive into the details of your program. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. It's kind of like the difference of like having a fling with somebody <laughs> and it might all be great, but then going into like a deep committed relationship, you're always going to get so much more. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I definitely think it makes sense. And I think, yeah, my, I totally hold my hands up. My business model was wrong. <laughs> and I kind of knew when I started to do it, you know, this doesn't make business sense, ha you know, not having this kind of rinse and repeat and but I just didn't want that commitment at the start. Mm -hmm. But now I do want the commitment and I totally get that it's better for the client as well because I've gone into programs myself and I was recently in a four month one at the very start of twenty um, this year, 2021. And I know that when I even got halfway through the program, people were still only settling in after two months. Mm -hmm. So that was a big eye opener for me. And some people... It was only a small group. Some people still weren't showing up. They still weren't kind of in that confident space to show up for the calls. Um, so, yeah, it, you know, it has opened my eyes. And mm -hmm. I've been in longer programs as well. And I do think the magic happens the more you get to know somebody. And you'll just understand your client more. So you'll be able to help them more and just kind of get that 360 as opposed to when you're just meeting somebody for a quick win or a quick service you can't go super deep and mm. you know so you can help them to a certain degree but it's never going to be as good as like ongoing work you know you're never going to get to the um to the good stuff <laughs> so i can see some comments come in so i'm just going to quickly just say hello to a few people so we've got hat or kathy sorry i can't even pronounce kathy from south Southern Nevada, thank you. And then Jennifer's here. I'm sorry, there is somebody here showing up as LinkedIn user. This happened yesterday. I thought it was a StreamYard issue, but I think it's a LinkedIn issue because when I got off after, I could actually see the person's name. So whoever you are, LinkedIn user, type in the comments and let us know because I'm curious now. And it's nothing wrong with your profile or anything. I just think LinkedIn's been a bit glitchy. So and um, Jennifer is also saying keep the client long enough to truly serve them mm -hmm. so yeah that's so true so Wendy I have written down your questions here that I want to ask you and I know we've kind of gone around them but um I just want to make sure I definitely ask them because I have a knack of going off tangent <laughs> so um please can you explain well we have kind of touched on it but how can an increased client lifespan benefit the client Mm -hmm. So I think we already covered that. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to um, talk about something that you brought up two really good points sure. um, about commitment. And um, also, what was the other one? Let's just talk about the commitment one first. Yeah. Oh, relationship, like relationships. Um, but the commitment, and I think it's important to understand that people are going to come in with a different idea about commitment. And I when you're structuring your business, you don't want to have just one entry point because if you only have this like big, high committed level, yeah, you're going to have people who are disappointed and you're going to end up turning away people that could be potentially really great clients because they may have some sort of fear of commitment. It could be a financial thing, but it also could be like, I don't know if I'm going to be moving away. I don't know what my husband's going to think, you know, like it could be all different kinds of, or, or they may just be like, I'm not really sure about you yet. You know, like you need to prove yourself. Yeah. So I think it's important that you have like lower introductory offers that maybe you don't 
you know, give it to them right away. Yeah. <laughs> right. But like give some, some people s- some other ways to work with you before just like, not just having just one, like you have to work with me for a year or that's it. Like, I think that that's not a good model at all. <laughs> And I hope that's not your model. And if it is, I'm sorry if I'm insulting you. No, it's not. <laughs> Honestly, my longest model is eight weeks. So it's still yeah. quite a quick win. So I have like mm-hmm. a power kind of hour session mm-hmm. with your profile or similar. I make a video for you. So I've, they're like my two mm-hmm. short ones. And then if somebody does the power hour with me, uh, if they need more information or if they're interested, then I mentioned the eight week program because they've already you know got to know me so Mm -hmm. i kind of feed from the two kind of um short programs into the long one but yeah eight weeks is my longest so as you can see i still have the commitment (laughs) issues (laughs) yeah and like sometimes what will happen too is people's personalities will reflect in different ways that you serve them so for example i'm very introverted and i don't do very well in group settings like I am very friendly, so people don't usually expect me to tell them that I'm introverted, and I can lead a class no problem, but on the back end of it, it sucks the energy out of me, so I don't like doing group coaching, and I don't do it anymore um, because it's not good for me, but what I noticed over the the years is that people will behave very differently in a group setting than they do in one-on-one, and sometimes they actually rise to the occasion and they they get better you know it, it's a better impact for them it's a better deal and sometimes they kind of shrink back and they're like ooh, like i like i do so i think that you know it's important to realize just like learning style just like communication personality type is important to think about because when you know yourself and you know how you operate it can help you to meet people where they where they are, and that's really what they're coming to you for. They really want you to meet them where they are and help them where they they need to go. So um, you had just kind of mentioned something about um, group your group coaching. That was where that came from. Yeah, yeah, and to be honest, I'm an introvert like you, even though I'm chatty. And in general, I was never really a fan of group programs. But I did one myself that I mentioned at the start of the year, and it was a small program. There was about 17 of us, which might seem big, but I was kind of like, oh, I can do this. It's not hundreds of people in a mm-hmm. random Facebook group. And, and my program, I've capped it at 15, so it's still small. And I kind of learned that even if there's 15, just with timings and schedules, you'll never really get the 15 online. You might get eight. <laughs> so um, it's still small as opposed to, like, I cannot stand programs that have hundreds of people in. That just makes me just want to just mm-hmm. run for the hills. It just, I I will never kind of be, have the confidence really to, to kind of, sh- you know, stand out and shine in a big program like that. And mm-hmm. energetically, you know, as an introvert, it's just, no, it's hideous. Mm-hmm. But uh, I do, I surprise myself. I've quite enjoyed running my group program, probably because I'm targeting at introverted female entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. We're all at a similar energy level and there's not loads of us. So yeah, like you say, it's important to know yourself because I couldn't run a big program either. I wouldn't want to run it. It would actually just drain the life out of me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, less is more for me. Yeah, and the same. I'm in a group coaching program right now, but you know, it doesn't really feel like other group coaching programs that I've been in because it's a little bit more intimate. I think there's like maybe 30 people in the group, and I I get it. I get one-on-one attention from the coach, like outside of the training. So like, it feels like it's a one-on like it. It's a nice hybrid model. Lani yeah. Dickinson, by the way, <laughs> just throw her name out there. <laughs> That's good. It's good to do a shout out. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, But yeah, so I totally agree with like just making like thinking about the needs of not just your client and not just yourself, but how you as yourself can best serve your clients. Absolutely. Yeah. And have you got it? Because obviously you've come from the well-being space and that's like your background. Have you got any tips to avoid burnout, whether it's physical burnout, mental burnout? In mm-hmm. relation to like client retention or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, burnout, I think that it's it's just like preparing for a disaster, right? Like because you never know when it's gonna strike. And it's 
life is going to serve it up to you at some point in some way, somehow, like your parents are going to get sick or your child's going to have an accident or something's going to disrupt your life in a way where if you are not prepared for it, everything will fall apart. Burnout is going to come. It is, it, it's kind of inevitable because you're like, that's just the ebb and flow of life, but you can prepare yourself for it and you can learn the effects of when it's coming on so that you can stave it off, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So in business, of course, like putting systems into place, automating as much as you can and having trusted people that you can you know, delegate things off to if need be. So those are three tips that I would give you for, for your business. Always make sure that, you know, you have that, like, make sure that you have, like, you know, a a protocol book. (laughs) Sometimes, I mean, I I know that sounds kind of crazy, like, but I worked at a Fortune 50 company in a health and wellness field at a very reputable company. And I walked in and the training was ridiculous. Like, they, they had no standard operating procedure. They had no manual. They had four different books and you had to, like, so I just did it. Like, I just fixed it. Because it was ridiculous. But you need to be able to have some things in place that you can, that people can refer to should something happen to you. Should you get in a car accident and you're, you know, in a coma? I mean, you need to think about those kinds of things. Just like you want to, you know, make sure that your children are taken care of if, you know, something, God forbid, happens to you. The same thing with your business. Like you want to make sure that you have your ducks in a row. And then as far as like health and wellness, Really being in tune to your body, making sure that you're hydrated, making sure that you're getting enough sleep, that you're saying no to things. You know, like you and I were speaking, I think, um, off camera. I think it was before we before we hopped on here. We we're just chatting about um, you know, kind of being done at about six o'clock. Yeah, yeah, that's me. I'm yeah. like future off. Well, it can be very, um, you know, your business can be very addicting. Yeah. So. Having that self-discipline and control to shut the computer off, yeah. put the phone away, and sit down with your family, or go for a walk, or go to the gym, or do whatever it, it, it means to you to disconnect and reconnect with yourself. So that's different for everybody. I mean, that could be a walk in the woods. It could be a you know a bubble bath. It could be a night out with friends. Yeah. It could be a lot of different things, but. Knowing yourself, like I had mentioned before, like really knowing yourself and staying true to who you are is really going to be the foundation for avoiding that burnout or at least minimizing it. Like, I don't think you can really avoid it completely, but you can minimize it. Yeah, I love that. There's a bit of an overlap really in the topic today. And yesterday I was chatting to Agnes, who also belongs to the same networking group as Mm -hmm. us the advance giving them a shout out and she was talking about the power of reinvention and she was there saying you know how important it is to know yourself because when you don't really know yourself that's when you get overwhelmed or burn out and I see it with a lot of business owners even when they come to me for a strategy session they haven't even dug in deep as to who they are as an individual, so their personal brand, they don't even know what topics they're passionate about, and they haven't done a like a deep dive into their business values. They don't, they haven't really solidified any business values, and that's why they're struggling so much with what to share on LinkedIn because they don't really know what they stand for. And, mm-hmm. I, and I get that. I know when I was in corporate life, this was something I never did. I was never encouraged to really explore my personal values and. You know, you learn off the the kind of mission and vision for the company when you you have your interview and you're all about it, and then you probably forget it along the way. But you never really dig deep into your personal values. And I would say the first year in my business, I did not have any business values for my super connector. It took me about a year to kind of go, oh, okay, what do I actually stand for? What am I all about? Like, what is my differentiation? Like, what is the whole point of this? What is the purpose? And I think if you're not working in line with your values, then you can get burnout. And that's happened to me. And I think in relation to your services as well, if you're giving services that don't really spark joy for you, maybe joy is one of your values, you're mm-hmm. going to get burnout as well. So it all kind of links back to just really knowing yourself, doesn't it? And 
just being so self-aware. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I really think that it does because, you know, even in like the health and wellness, and that, that's what a big part of why you go to a coach is because you're too close to it. You can't see yeah. it. And oftentimes you've been doing the same thing so much that it becomes automatic and your subconscious has taken over. So you, you need somebody to kind of pick things apart with you to figure it out. Like that's part of the coaching space. Yeah. And again, it doesn't really matter what kind of content you're delivering. It, it has to do with like really getting into like, this is how, th this is how the problem is showing up, but it's really kind of diving back into yourself and who you are as a person. And that's where our work as coaches really comes up. Like we have to help people tear through that. A lot of times I'm working with clients and they're coming to me because they're overweight. And really what I end up helping them with is stress, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, time management, time blocking, like, you know, like, because they don't do that. Like they let their, their, their company, they let their boss, you know, overwork them so that they're taking meetings all day long and not getting any of their projects done and things like that. So that's not my job as a wellness coach. Yeah, I absolutely address that because it's affecting their stress levels. Yeah. So do you see how like all of that's kind of connected, like really kind of knowing yourself and being in tune to who you are? That's a lot of the work that we do as coaches is we help people get there. So you kind of have to have that personal connection, you kind of have to have a longer relationship with somebody because yeah. people are not just going to tell you about their work problems when they're not coming to you for work, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I'm just using that as an example because that's that's easy example for me. But people are not always going to just air out their dirty laundry with somebody that they just met, you know, and especially if they're not even sure, if they don't even know what the problem is, you know, like they don't because they're on autopilot. So you really want to make sure that you're, you know, layering your, your program out, spacing it out so that you can serve them that way. Yeah, no, I totally, I love that. And I spoke to another coach the other day and she was saying in relation to LinkedIn, a lot of people, they don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. So I can certainly, I can presume certain things or assume certain things, but that won't even be the problem. And I know having had people like one-to-one -one or in my group program, it's not just LinkedIn help. I help them with mindset blogs, mm -hmm. posture syndrome, mm -hmm. confidence, you know, the confidence to show up. It's not just technical, you know, LinkedIn advice or content advice or connection advice. It's it's a lot more. Mm -hmm. And I think people only kind of start to open up about their worries or their fears, especially in the group program after a few weeks, after you've showed up and they've mm -hmm. got to trust you. Mm -hmm. and yeah it's hard in a, in a one-off even though I do do one-offs and I think I get people to always fill out a questionnaire in advance so maybe it doesn't feel so traumatic as having to tell me in person but yeah it's it's you yeah it's hard to do that and um, deep dive with just quick services it is easier with an ongoing model because mm -hmm. some weeks you'll have a good week some weeks your energy will be low and that's, you know, that's just, like you said, it's all about the ebb and flow. And if you've got that kind of going on over a, a length of time, you're going to get there. But what if you book in a one-off session and actually you're a bit flat that day, you know, yourself as the host, like as the person giving the service or the client, it's not really going to be the best for either of you. Right. Uh, Whereas you mentioned, I know it's a terrible thing to think of, but disasters like car crashes or comas, um, or anything like that I do think if you've got ongoing clients they will be more understanding because they mm -hmm. will know you whereas a new client who doesn't know you could be causing you stress kind of saying you know I want my money back <laughs> what mm -hmm. when's the, when's the thing happening you know so I do think you know it there's a bit more leeway and this is a really good chat for me like you're kind of tapping into my brain because yeah. This is only um, something I've explored really in the last year. Like up to then, I was all quick wins, quick wins, quick wins, quick services, quick services, overgive, overgive, burnout. So I totally um, love this whole thing about how it benefits both the client and the coach giving the service. So I know we've, we're nearly at 30 minutes. So I'm just going to 
quickly just check the comments. I'm just going to say hi to Samantha from London and just say if anybody's got any questions for Wendy today about anything to do with client retention um, or engagement strategies, get in quick. Um, otherwise, Wendy, do you want to tell everyone what is the best way to contact you going forward? Obviously, you're on LinkedIn. Sure. Yes, I am on LinkedIn. Um, I'm very active on Facebook and Instagram, and you can find me um, basically just by searching my name. It's Wendy Kleinke. I'm pretty much, there is one other Wendy Kleinke, but she's blonde and has a private profile and I'm everywhere. So <laughs> you can certainly find me on Instagram or um, Facebook and of course, LinkedIn. So shoot me a message. I'd love to talk to you. And you know, if you wanted to get on a discovery, like a, like a coffee chat, if you wanted to you know, dive into some things. I'm totally open to that. So let me know. Um, Jennifer, thank you so much for this opportunity to come and chat with you. I know this is a little bit of a different, um, everybody talks a lot about lead generation and I'm so passionate about this in case you can't tell. <laughs> well, it's great advice and it's advice I wish I had at the start that somebody said to me, Jennifer, this is all very good with this no commitment, but it's going to burn you out, you know, down mm -hmm. the line. So so you mentioned that your shortest program is three months. Like, what is your longest or like, what do most people kind of book in with you? So really, um, to really get the business super stable, I like about a year yeah. um, because I have it, I have it structured in, into a framework. It's not like a blueprint, but like I mentioned, I don't do group work. So I basically yeah. do one-on-one -on -one work where it's kind of coaching, kind of consulting. Um, it's kind of like a combination and um, I meet you where you are. So sometimes we, we get through the initial stuff really quick. Sometimes, you know, it takes a little bit longer, but it typically takes about a year and I do it in three month blocks. Okay. That's interesting about the blocks. Yeah. And I think so many people, they just want quick wins. And even when it comes to LinkedIn, mm -hmm. You know to get traction if you're coming new to linkedin and if you're if you're trying to get traction from content or something like that it can take up to a year it can take up to 18 months but some you know a lot of people think they watch one webinar or one talk and then they're going to be an expert but it's mm -hmm. never that quick is it you you know you have to go deep really to to get those results yeah. And, you know, sometimes I find that people will stick with me for longer um, than the initial contract. Actually, it, to be honest with you, like it happens more often than not. People usually leave me because of location changes yeah. or um, some other kind of struggle. So it's never because they're not happy with what they're getting. But um, but yeah, I forget where I was going with that. Sorry, no, I need to run over. <laughs> No, don't worry. I'm going to wrap it up in a sec. But yeah, I think it's just solidified for me. It's that ongoing support and that accountability, isn't it? So Wendy's video has just disappeared. But up oh, there, she, she's back. But on that note, I will wrap it up because I am respectful of your time. And I know I could go on and on and on all day. So thank you so much for joining me and for everyone watching. And if you're watching on replay later, just put it in the comments, hashtag replay. And if you've got any comments or anything let me know i will check all the comments later on today so thanks a million wendy i really appreciate you coming on great advice and definitely food for thought and hopefully anyone else is listening like me who had a model like mine take note <laughs> okay so, Thank you so much. thanks so much guys i'll be back again tomorrow tomorrow i'm chatting all things menopause with adele martins it's it was actually international menopause day yesterday and then i've got two more amazing women after that so see you tomorrow for a coffee and thanks again wendy you were fab thank you